Hello, and welcome back to part two of this tutorial series, uh, where we make where we're making a title screen and adding buttons to a Pi game application. Uh, firstly, I've just I've just moved the position of my microphone. Uh, when I was editing the first part, I realised that there were quite a few that the noise from my keyboard was quite loud, and I wanted to try and reduce that bit for you guys because I know sometimes little things like that on videos can be super annoying. So anyway, hopefully this is a bit better. Uh, and if you didn't notice it in the first video, well, you're bound to notice it now that I've brought it up. We're going to carry on with our example from part one. If you didn't watch part one, uh, I recommend you start with that, so there should be a link to that in the uh, in the description. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're going to make our buttons respond to clicks. So um, the way I like to do that is um, by creating enums. Um, of different potential actions because I find that you can control your um, game state quite well with enums. Um, there are obviously other options. You could pass in uh, functions directly into your uh, button uh, that, that could be called when they detect a click. Uh, so anyway, enums. So first things first, we need to import enums. Enum, like so, um, and we'll actually we'll we'll create the enum later. Um, but working down this file, we'll need to add an action um, argument to the initialization function of our UI element, and uh, we can assign this anywhere. But we'll just put it at the bottom. Um, but the point of this is so that this button knows what action is assigned with it and when you have lots of buttons uh, each one can detect if they've been clicked and if they've been clicked then they can pass back whatever the desired action for that button is. So we'll need to detect if there is a button click and we're going to make a change to our update function here so as well as getting the mouse position uh, we also are going to ch check for mouse up event so uh, there's lots of events you can have. There's mouse down. Uh, we're going to use mouse up. So this is when a button has been depressed on your mouse and then has been released again. Uh, and that triggers the mouse up event. Um, so we can leave some of this. Um, but when there is a collision between our mouse position and our button image, we want to add another case in here to say, well, if mouse up, uh, then we want to return that action. So that would be returning our enum that's associated with this button. Um, and I think that that's all the changes we need to make to our UI element. Um, now just under here, we can create our uh, enum class, uh, which we'll call game state. Uh, inherit enum and uh, just to start with we'll just have a single possible action which will be quit and we'll just associate minus one with that. It doesn't really matter what numbers you choose as long as you don't have any duplicates. And then we need to go to our main function and we're going to need to add an action because we don't want to use the default. Actually let's just check did I add a default? I didn't add a default. So what we want to do is have the potential for buttons to not have an action. Um, so we'll just add a default none to that argument. We'll come back down. OK, action. Uh, well, we've only got one possible action, and we want that to be quit. And then we're going to need to do a bit of work on our main game loop, because it's quite slender at the moment. <laughs> so. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to use the event queue to check for this mouse up event. So we're going to start with the assumption that um, mouse up is false. And then for each event, we're going to check if that's a mouse up event. So if event.type is pygame.mouseButtonUp. 
and event button is 1. So that's just checking that it is the primary mouse button that's clicked. So we only want to trigger the buttons if that's the case. Um, and then we use set this variable here to be true. Okay, so now also in this loop we need to detect if a button has been clicked. So, oh, what we'll do, we'll make this a bit clearer. Up here where we've got UI element, um, we I think we'll call that quit button. Um, so then we also need to change the update here. Uh, we need to pass in uh, our mouse up variable now. But we also want to, want to store if update returns a value. So um, when we uh, rewrote our update function, we're potentially now returning um, an action. Uh, if the mouse isn't clicked, then no action is returned uh, from there. But if something is uh, returned, then we want to check. So uh, we want it to do if the result of that uh, is not none. Uh, then we will uh, just end the function there. So most of the time if it's not well if it's not clicked then uh, this does actually return none it's just uh, a, a function or a method that doesn't have a return value um, evaluates as none and um, and if it is clicked then it will have an action. So whenever there's a quit action um, we, we, we will stop the stop, stop the application. Uh, we need to just update that draw call with the, since we renamed our button. Um, and that should be it. So let's give this another go, see if we made any errors. Okay. Oh, we're still called Hello World. Oh, but that does actually, that does work correctly. We do end the application. Let's just make that a bit, <laughs> a bit clearer. Um, let's give that another quick go. Okay, so now we have a quick button uh, and clicking it does in fact do uh, what you expect a quit button to do. Okay, so that was a sh much shorter part than part one. I hope you'll come back for part three, where we'll uh, add, add a couple more buttons, get a bit more real game flow going, more than just a quit button. And just a reminder that if you actually prefer written versions of tutorials rather than video versions, then there is a written version of this on my blog, programmingpixels.com. There's a link below in the description. And obviously you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, all of that kind of stuff. There's links to on my blog as well. Or you can sign up for the blog mailing list and you'll get email notifications.